I've been using the K2V2 for almost three months now, and as promised, here's my month three update. I sold it. Here's why. Okay, let me explain. First of all, 95% um, of this keyboard I really enjoy and really like, but there's just this one thing that just pushed me to let go of the keyboard. So first, let's discuss the things that I liked over the three months that I've used this keyboard. First is the typing experience. If you've never tried mechanical keyboards before, mechanical keyboards will introduce you to newfound joys and satisfaction and happiness of just using a keyboard. I found myself just typing for the sake of typing, not because I had to type something, but because it felt good. I had to gather on brown switches and I can say that it's a great middle ground switches because when you get um, tactile feedback when you're typing, you know, when you've actuated the key. And second, you get um, just enough RL feedback, not as noisy and as annoying as the blue switches, but just enough. As a quick reference, here's what it sounds like compared to a MacBook keyboard. The key layout and profile was just perfect for me as well. When I put my hands at the keyboard and start typing, the keys are just where I expect them to be, which is really, really great. Second is the connectivity options, the ability to quickly switch to three different Bluetooth devices. So using Bluetooth, I have paired the keyboard to my MacBook, my work laptop, and my phone. And then using the USB-C cable that came with the keyboard, I connected to my PC. So I have technically four devices connected to the keyboard and I can easily switch through them very quickly. And I have not experienced any hiccups with the Bluetooth connection in my three months of usage. Once it's connected, it stays connected and it works flawlessly. Number three is battery life. I have never actually run out of juice. I use it with backlight on most of the time and the only charging time it gets is once or twice a week when I use the PC to play for like one to three hours. So with this, I can say that the battery life on the K2V2 is something you don't have to worry about. Number four is backlight. I never expected to use the backlight as much as I did, but yeah, I did use it a lot. I found that it's fun to have light options on your keyboard. Uh, my favorite one was the slow wave effect. And the one I got was actually the white backlight version. So if you're gonna get the RGB version, you're gonna have more variations and options for the backlight. So if I love the keyboard for all those things that I've mentioned, then why did I sell it? Well, one thing, ergonomics. It was a huge adjustment for me to accommodate the K2's um, thick base height and long actuation distance. Prior to having the K2, I mentally and physically prepared myself to accommodate and to adjust to the K2's height, but it wasn't enough. After three months of trying, it just wasn't getting any better. It's very satisfying when I'm typing full speed or when I'm typing a lot, but for other use cases, such as designing and editing a video where my left hand would most of the time be resting, it would just get uncomfortable after a time. I constantly had discomfort on my left wrist at this point here, and it actually reached a point that it hurt, like not just discomfort, but it hurt. And yes, I eventually used a wrist rest after the second month, but it didn't help as much as I hoped it would. So over time, the discomfort just completely negated the satisfaction and joy when typing full speed, especially considering that most of my day is spent designing and editing videos. So my wrist, my left wrist is actually resting, uh, which adds more pressure at this point of the wrist. And eventually the discomfort becomes pain. That being said, this doesn't apply to everyone and this doesn't make the K2V2 a horrible keyboard. As a matter of fact, it's a great keyboard. A lot of people love it. It's just that it's not the one for me. Right now, I've gone back to using the built-in keyboards on the laptop. I've just recently upgraded to an M1 MacBook Pro, and I found that the keyboard on this one is much more satisfying and tactile than the 2015 MacBook Pro that I previously had. And of course, the comfort of typing on a low-profile keyboard. I might consider trying the K3 in the future, but right now, I'm pretty happy with the keyboard on the M1 MacBook Pro. And that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment down below. Should Keychron K8 to K2 V3 with a thinner base height? I think a lot of people would like that. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.